Hey guys, um, I've had some questions on uh, people having timelines that are different from the original frame rate that they shot. And I wanted to kind of clear up some things on setting up timelines. And uh, if you've already edited a project and realize your project and your timeline is in a different frame rate than your original footage, then I want to show some workarounds for that really quick here. So what I re recommend doing from the very beginning is uh, be very familiar with your footage and what sort of footage you're shooting and what sort of frame rate. Because this is actually, this project here has some mixed frame it doesn't actually have mixed frame rates that's kind of that kind of makes it really makes things a little complex but I've got some uh, different uh, size of footage here what I recommend doing is finding your footage first uh, I've got some footage from a red camera here look at the frame rate and a good way of uh, doing that uh, to set up a timeline first of all you got to understand what resolution do I want to edit in and what frame rate do I want to edit in and once you've chosen that you're going to be dumping all your footage into that one timeline like this here I've got some footage that is um, if, you, if you select it this area up here by the way I use the tilde key to go full fr full fr frame over the screen here whatever screen you go over it maximizes by using the tilde key which is above the tab key so I'm going to go over this here I'm in a tilde and uh, you have this little area up here if you don't have this for some reason uh, what you need to do is click on this little drop down right there because uh, it might end and check mark the preview area see this might be missing if that is missing and you select the clip and it's not showing the basic information click on this little pull down here Go down to preview area, click on that, and it will show the preview area. And this will show uh, three really important things here that you need to know for your timeline settings. It will show resolution. It will show uh, pixel aspect ratio, which should be standard for pretty much anything you shoot these days. Uh, 1.0, earlier things like HDV and DV footage had a stretched pixel aspect ratio to fit more information or to upscale basically the, uh, the information that existed on those earlier cameras into uh, a higher resolution. Uh, but you have 1.0 and frame rate. So actually the two most important things are going to be your resolution and frame rate. And pixel aspect ratio is important, but to a slightly lesser extent. You got always pay attention to that though. You always want everything that you shoot these days in 1.0 square pixel aspect ratio. So if you go down and select any clip, it'll show the information. So you've got red footage, which is uh, 4800 by 2700 here. If you want to see your aspect ratio, I'm going to go to my calculator. Um, and see what my aspect ratio is. And the simple way of doing this is dividing your vertical, or sorry, your horizontal uh, pixels by your vertical pixels. You just say 4800 divided by uh, 2700, and you have a 1.78, basically rounding that up, 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio there, which is basically 16 by 9. That is standard HD. Standard HD is 16 by 9. You know, then you get into more cinematic aspect ratios. If you have, uh, you'll get into like 2.0 and 2.35. Uh, so you get, and those are wider aspect ratios. But 16 by 9 is um, is 1.77, and 4 by 3. If you divide 4 by 3, the old standard definition is 1.33. So 1.33 is the old standard definition square pixel, or, or not pixel aspect, but the uh, screening aspect ratio. And 1.78 is the 16 is 16 by 9. Yeah, 16 divided by 9 is 1.78. There you go. So that's standard HD. So you got to ask yourself the question, what aspect ratio am I going to be screening in? What resolution, what final resolution am I going to be screening in? And what frame rate? And this one here, this clip. So I've got mixed footage here. I've got this F3 from the Sony camera that's 1920 by 1080. This was intended for uh, online use, this commercial that we shot. So actually, my timeline that I'm going to be doing is going to be a 1920 by 1080 resolution, 20, 23.976, 24 frames per second drop frame timeline. So this is what I recommend doing. First of all, grab a clip, drag it over to your little new item icon here, and drop it on there. It'll put that clip in the exact same folder where the, the clip that I pulled in there, but what it does is it makes this timeline, if you select that timeline now, it is the identical settings to this clip right here, and that's what I'm going to be editing in from now on. So I'm going to grab this timeline, I'm going to drag it out and drop it. Now it's not in that folder any longer. So, like I said, don't sit there and just start editing in this, because then you'll not realize where your timeline is, and it'll be named this weird name. So I say, drag it out, rename it and call this uh, like final edit I don't know whatever you want to call it but that is my final edit right there that's what I'm going to be editing footage into so now you double click on that you load it and there it is um, it's loaded uh, but you got the clip in there I'm just going to delete the clip and now my timeline is uh, completely empty and I have the settings that I want so now if I start grabbing footage here 
let's go to our uh, F3 footage and you open up a clip, uh, find a clip that you want there, in point, out point, and drop that into my timeline period. I and O, oops, I gotta sign my video track there. Undo that and drop it in again. There we go. So now I've got that clip dropped in there. It's a, uh, the, the clip is matching. It looks just fine. But now watch this. If I grab something that is a different, uh, if you grab something that's a different frame rate and you drop it in, it's going to conform it. Say you have 60 frames per second, it will conform it from 60 to 24. It'll actually pull out frames. And by conforming, I mean it will actually pull, pull out frames to match. And it'll pull out 24 of those frames flagged kind of mathematically throughout the 60 frames per second. So it still looks like the same speed. It's not slowing it down. If you're doing slow motion, that's a completely different issue. But let's grab the red footage. Same frame rate, so I'm set here. But I'm going to double click on this. That was a short clip. So let me grab another one here. In point, out point, just a random clip. Period to drop that in. My audio. It's all weird. Don't need my audio anyway. This is red footage. So option, drag across these, get rid of my audio. But I dropped that clip in there. And it dropped my red footage down inside here. But this is like 4K footage, and this is uh, 1920 by 1080. So this is a lot larger. Look what happens when you drop this big footage inside of a small timeline. Uh, this is zoomed up. It's zoomed up. It's, it puts it in. Uh, it's showing 1920 by 1080 worth uh, amount of pixels in here. So it's actually zoomed up on it. So what you can do is you can right click on this clip inside your timeline and say scale to frame size and it will zoom it down in and fit it within the window. And now it's doing this live scale. It's like changed, it's mathematically changed this to basically turn it into uh, 1920 by 1080 footage to conform it into this timeline here. And if you select the clip and go into it and look at it, the scale is at 100. It uh, is now still at 100 percent. It's saying, but it has reconformed this to be. It's basically treating this as though it is 1920 by 1080 footage. If you right-click on it and say set to frame size, then it doesn't reinterpret it. It actually just scales it down. And you'll notice this. Watch this. If you right-click and do scale to frame size, it fits it in, and it's treating it as though it's 1920 by 1080. It's still at 100 percent. Now it's saying this is like 1920 by 1080 footage, even though it's 4K footage, but re interpreting it and it's still at a hundred percent here. If you uh, right click on it, well let's do undo. If you right click on it and say set to frame size, what it does is it actually just scales it down. It's not reinterpreting it, it's actually scaling it down. So it's a kind of two different concepts there to get used to if you're editing within one timeline here. Okay, and one thing you got to realize as well, sorry this is probably getting a little too deep than we need to, but up here under the Premiere Pro preferences, if you go under preferences in general, uh, there will be this little check mark right down here, this default scale to frame size. It'll do this automatically if you check mark this. Now one weird thing that Premiere does, and I wish they would get rid of this, is when you check mark that, um, footage that you've already brought in and have imported into Premiere, it will not interpret that footage as you pull it back in. So watch this. Uh, if we go down to our red footage, that's a different resolution. Double click on that, put an in point, out point, and then we drop that down in the timeline. Um, you notice that this footage here is blown up compared to this footage here. So you actually have to right, right click on this and say scale to frame size or set to frame size. If you're going to be zooming up on it later on, you probably want to do set to frame size, but scale to frame size if you're just editing 1920 by 1080. That works because you can actually undo that later if you need to, if you need to zoom up on it a little bit. But um, just be aware of that. Um, so now, now that I dropped that in, it's not doing it automatically. The, it will what it does now, now that that's checkmarked, is any footage you bring in from then on, if we go to our media browser here and import some red footage now, and import these two clips there, and go back to our footage here, uh, these two clips, it will now do it to footage that you import while that is checkmarked. And I wish it wouldn't do that, and obviously the footage hasn't been corrected, color corrected, but uh, let me do in point, out point, and now we drop that down to the timeline, and notice it did do the scaling there automatically. It'll do it from all the footage. So if you're going to start a project, I'd recommend I'll just always having that check marked, check mark it from the beginning. Sometimes there's some instances you will, there's some instances you won't, but most of the time I'd say go ahead and use it. Otherwise you're going to be bringing 4K footage into a 1920 by 1080 timeline and scaling it down every time you drop it in. So it just depends on what you're planning on editing and what's your final product. So uh, now changing frame rates. So if you once you have your timeline set up and you've been doing your all your editing uh, in this fashion, and uh, you know your frame rate, you know your your resolution. Uh, say you you didn't do that from the beginning. So I've got a different timeline here. 
So what I recommend doing is go to your footage, look at some of your footage here, go to your footage, look at your footage, see what your resolution and your frame rate is, and if your timeline is different, see I've got a one that's different here, I click on that and notice that this is 1920 by 1080 but it's 30 frames per second instead of uh, 24 frames per second and say I want my project to be in 24 but I've already done let's double click on this I've done all the editing and it's been in 30 frames per second and I want it to be the same frame rate as my footage uh, what you can do is you can just go down to your you go down to your new sequence here and create a new sequence and say well I want my final product to be in uh, digital DSLR is a really good one for 1920 by 1080 I'm going to say I want it to be in 24 frames per second I'm going to create a new one I'm going to call this one new one just so I know which one it is uh, so I created that and now it's all here and really all you have to do since it's the same resolution uh, is just simply go to your uh, final edit oops that's not it uh, my frame rate one go to your the frame rate that, the the timeline that has the incorrect frame rate do command a to select all command C to copy go to your new one command V as in Victor to paste and paste it all in there and it will auto conform everything down to 24 frames per second um, and actually match the frame rate of the clips so that's if you've been editing and you have changed the frame rate that is kind of the way to go is create a new timeline copy everything, select everything from your old timeline and paste it in your new timeline. Now if you're changing resolutions that's a that's kind of a completely different issue that gets a little complex because uh, if you've been doing downscaling from from 4k footage and then you want to upscale everything to 4k footage uh, that's a little bit different. You're going to have to copy and paste it and go through and look at all your clips. You can highlight everything and tell everything to scale to frame size. What you might have to do is go to your uh, I've got an example here. We've got uh, actually a timeline where everything is small here. Let me go in and paste it in here into this. This is a standard definition timeline. And you go through it and you'll notice everything is too large because this is a 720 by 480 timeline. You can select everything, right click, uncheck scale to frame size, right click again and recheck it and it will reconform everything to meet that timeline's standards. Uh, and then everything meets in your letterboxed uh, 4 by 3. Uh, if we go to this large one here, this is a 4K one, and you copy and paste things into it, and it's going from 1920 to by, uh, 1920 by 1080 footage to 4K footage that matches perfectly. Once again, you can just highlight everything, right click, uncheck that scale to frame size that was checked in the previous timeline, right click and do it again, and it refreshes it and scales everything to meet the standards of your new timeline. And that's how you kind of get everything to match and uh, go to the, the settings that you want. And then when you export, a uh, quick export uh, recommendation here, I'm going to go to, this is a 4K timeline here. I'm going to do con Command M and bring up our export window. So for exporting this video clip out here, uh, what we can do is we go up here, we're going to do H.264 because we're going to go to YouTube. Uh, I'm going to find my YouTube settings here, go down to YouTube 1080 because um, I'm going to export it out to 10. Now if you check mark any of these things here they're going to match your timeline settings. Right here I've chosen the preset for YouTube which is 1920 by 1080 uh, but this is check marked here. My timeline settings and this one is 30 frames per second so actually I don't want to do that. I want to let's say I want a 4k timeline I'm going to upload to YouTube but I want 20 my original frame rate 24 frames per second. Belay specs big over here is selected 29.97 so uh, what I can do here is create a new timeline. I'm going to make this a 4K, 16 by 9. Actually, you can use red here, which works fine for 4K HD, 16 by 9 right there. It doesn't really use necessarily use the red codec. It's just uh, setting up the, these three settings, your uh, pixel aspect ratio, your um, resolution, and your frame rate. So I'm going to call this final 4K. And I've got this final 4K. I'm going to go to my, um, I'm going to go to my big one here. I'm going to grab that because it's the large resolution. I'm going to go to my final, and I'm going to paste that in here. So now this is the one that's at 24 frames per second. So now I've got this all 4K. I've got everything scaled. Everything looks good. So now I'm going to hit Command M to export, and I'm going to use H.264 YouTube. So if you want this to change and match the settings of your timeline uh, from your YouTube presets, you can just hit Match Source and it will check mark all these, and all these will match 
your timeline settings. Now we have a 16 by 9 4K timeline, 23.97, or you can just tell it to do, do the YouTube preset and check mark a few things down here. But that's how you get it to match your resolution if you're going, or if you just do the YouTube setting, it will down res that timeline. Well, there we go for you use the YouTube setting, but most importantly, this is 1920 by 1080, which is fine for YouTube. 23.976, which is uh, 24 frames per second drop, uh, drop frame. So everything is matched there. But that is kind of how you get everything to match. I can click on this now and export it out, and we'll have a 4K timeline that's uh, down rails to 1920 by 1080. So if you have any questions, uh, post your comments, let me know, and uh, I'll try to respond to them. Thanks.